natural cause of death. Obviously, we do get involved in the investigation of all deaths associated with homicide, suicide, drug overdoses, and all of those unnatural events. Next slide. The medical examiner's office uh, falls under the Division of Forensic Medicine in the Department of Pathology, as I mentioned previously. Dr. Hamilton is our chief medical examiner. That's a gubernatorial appointment. So he's appointed by the governor. Uh, we have an associate medical examiner, uh, Dr. Wendy Stroh, and I am the division chief. So I'm responsible for the oversight of the office, but everything that's done in the office at a professional level is, uh, uh, is done by Dr. Hamilton. Next slide. Uh, I am uh, pleased in a way to say that uh, the number of decedents uh, originating from Bradford County is down, I think, quite substantially from, from a prior year. Uh, there were 24 deaths here in Bradford County that were investigated by the medical examiner's office, and that would have been from uh, uh, October last year and, uh, through this year. Is that right, Ricardo? Right? Okay. So that would be your, your physical year. There were 24. On the average, it's about two cases per, per month. Many of these are, are traffic cases, and some are going to be uh, suicides as well, and some drug overdoses. That would make up the decedent population for Bradford County. This is a summary of the caseload or number of decedents over the course of the last 10 years. You've had years where the numbers were in the 30s. Uh, but last year, the number was down. Next slide. The, the way the finances are constructed is uh, there's a, a fee uh, that's prorated based on the number of decedents that are submitted through Bradford County to cover the operating costs. So based upon 24 decedents, that accounts for 3.2% uh, of our caseload which ends up to being a monthly assessment of $2,594.42. So that would be a monthly cost to Bradford County for medical examiner services provided by the medical examiner's office. In addition to that, there is a professional fee that covers uh, Dr. Hamilton's work and all the professional services that are done during the investigation of a death. And this is the fee schedule that we utilize. This is the same fee schedule that we've utilized for the last four or five years. There's been no change in this. But uh, uh, if, if there's a decedent that requires a full autopsy, there'll be uh, a fee for the autopsy as well as a fee for the investigative services. My understanding is that, actually, uh, it is the case that all decedents are transported by a local funeral home to Gainesville. And then, uh, so that's a fee that's all in the county. Uh, we don't assess that fee to Bradford County. I believe uh, Bradford County, maybe the office somewhere here would cover that fee. Uh, then the family is responsible for transport of the decedent back to uh, back to home, which likely would be here back in Bradford County with the funeral director. But that's not your cost. That's not our cost either. So uh, I think one reason why we're here today is to announced the opening of the new medical examiner facility. These are some photographs of the building. We're about two weeks from taking possession of the building. These photographs were taken last week. They're a little bit rough, but I think you can still get a feeling for what we have, or we'll have soon. Uh, this is the exterior of the building. Oh, I'm sorry, I was you're moving very fast. I, was. <laughs> I didn't know if you were, go okay. ahead. <laughs> this is the exterior of the building. We're located, uh, right near the intersection of Williston Road and Southwest 34th Street. Uh, if you know Gainesville, we're basically across the street from the big post office. It's not the main post office, the big post office, right across the street. It's conveniently located, uh, probably much easier for your funeral directors to get to this location than the current facility. So, And uh, it's very easy for law enforcement to reach the facility because we're less than a mile from I-75. This is the, uh, the lobby of the building. We do have a sheet of bulletproof glass there for security of our staff. While none of us have ever really been threatened, we always have to be prepared for threats. Uh, so that the building, uh, unlike our current building, uh, will be fully secure, and that includes an entrance that is secure. 
uh, so individuals can't enter enter the office or enter the morgue without uh, having proper access. This is a site down the hall. Uh, we'll have a, a fully uh, uh, filled uh, suite uh, for a conference room with uh, the ability to do depositions there, to do some teaching there, and have meetings with the family. Right now we don't have a place where Dr. Hamilton or our staff can meet with, with the family. So this will be a nice place for that. Uh, we also have a secure server room uh, that, that's uh, maintained by the university IT department. Our staff won't have access to that room because it is a secure, a secure room. We have a file room that has a two-hour walls on it, uh, so it's secure from fire and mostly secure from water. There are sprinklers in there due, uh, because of code, uh, but God forbid there was ever a fire. Uh, many of our records now are electronic versus paper, but we still have a lot of paper that we maintain. Uh, this is a photograph of one of the doctor's offices. This is not a great picture. Our offices for the doctors are about 10 by 10. Uh, they can actually do depositions in there, meet with family, or meet with law enforcement. We have three of these offices plus uh, uh, an office separate for the chief investigator. This is just an area, the, the office area. Uh, one thing we don't have right now in the current building is a secure sally port, uh, both for our vehicles but also for investigations. Uh, for example, after the, the, the crash on I-75 a few years ago, where you may recall there was fire and, and, and smoke and, and fog, as, as well as uh, multi-vehicle crashes. Uh, in one of those instances, it was a vehicle with three bodies that were burned. Uh, we had to transport that vehicle to the sheriff's office uh, for those remains to be removed, and that took about a week, and that was not in our facility. So now we have a facility where we can bring vehicles into, into a secure area for investigations, but this is also a spot where we can transfer bodies from the, the morgue vehicle into the morgue uh, in an area that's not visible to the general public. Right now, if you were at our building, you could see us moving bodies in and out every day. So it's we're much more sensitive to the needs of the public in this building. We can hold three vehicles in the Sally Port. That's another picture of the Sally Port. Uh, another picture of the Sally Port. And probably one of the most uh, needed upgrades to the building is a new morgue. Uh, right now, uh, we, have a, we have a very small morgue. It's about the quarter of this size of this room. Uh, Although we have two tables to two, two bodies at one time, it's nearly impossible to cut two bodies at one time. So this is uh, this new building. Uh, the morgue is probably, I'd say, two-thirds the size of, the size of this room. It's uh, been modernized and updated, and we could now cut three bodies at one time if that was necessary. This is a picture of the exterior. Next picture. Uh, uh, one thing we don't have right now is a generator. Uh, the new facility will have a generator that will be suitable for, for three days of loss of power. Most important is it provides power to our cooler. We have a cooler that can hold uh, about 20 bodies. Right now we can only maybe hold 10 bodies. Uh, it's, on a, it's pretty tough to hold 10 bodies in what we have, but the new building has a huge cooler uh, and it will be powered 24-7. The annual lease of the, the building is uh, 289000 uh, We lease from a developer, uh, and uh, our prior lease was about $60,000. So there is a significant increase in the lease. We anticipated that. Uh, we also anticipate utilities to, to be about $72,000 per, per year, but we really won't know until we actually run the building to see what our utilities will be. All other budget items do remain the same. So, uh, in the end, if we if you go all the way back up to one of the first slides, you'll see the budget for the proposed budget for Bradford County. Uh, this actually represents. Can you go back up? Slide. Next slide, maybe. Keep going. Huh. Keep going. I'm sorry, more. Keep going. <laughs> more. There. 
Okay. So uh, our monthly assessment uh, this year uh, to Bradford County is less than the assessment for the prior fiscal year, and that's because of the, the number of bodies that came came to Gainesville from Bradford County. Uh, so the uh, I'd say the, the loss of business uh, serves as a buffer, so we can keep your your fee, our assessment to you, uh, actually less than it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, right, Ricardo? So there is no significant uh, budget impact uh, to Bradford County, even with the increase in our our lease. Uh, so just, I guess. My advice to Bradford County is keep your highways safe and uh, keep, keep uh, minimize the number of drugs and suicides, and we'll probably keep people on the, the same pace of, of these figures. Any questions? No questions. Mr. Chairman, may I say a word? I just uh, I want to inform the board of. Some intangible things that the medical examiner's office uh, does for our department as well. They're, they always go out of their way to uh, assist us through Dr. Giannis. Dr. Giannis could be here today uh, to speak on their behalf, but uh, they have a long standing tradition of assisting our agency. Uh, many of you are by trade, work by trade, do things by trade, and, and one of the ways we learn is by getting information from the people that do this every single day. And these gentlemen <coughs> and everyone that works in our staff goes out of their way to help us each year uh, by teaching. Uh, he mentioned a room there that they can do some teaching in a conference room where they can receive us and teach. And they do that on a regular basis. So I just want to tell you that uh, beside that, they spend many hours on these investigations out here in the county. And uh, I just can't say enough good things about Dr. Hamilton particularly. And uh, on, on behalf of Dr. Giannis, I want to make sure you guys are aware that they do a lot of things behind the scene that assist Bracker County in a lot of ways. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the good word. Uh, uh, before I end, I want to let you know that we are going to have an open house. Uh, it's open to county commissioners, of course, uh, uh, staff of uh, the OCC, as well as the citizens of Bradford County. Uh, the date is going to be on uh, October 5, right? We don't have the time yet. We'll publicize that. It'll be on our website, but you'll get a notice, and I hope you'll come and see our new facility that we're very proud of. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you need a motion to approve the amendment. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the 15th Amendment to the three-party agreement for district medical examiner services. Second motion. Second. Second. 